What's up with it? Hey man, how's it going? Going pretty good. And yourself? Man, just uh, staying, staying on the creative grind, dude. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm Jai. Jai Love is what they call me. Yeah, yeah. A traveling uh, street artist. Definitely. Um, say traveling street artist. Yeah. Exactly what type of art do you do? Um, I'm a stencil artist. I, I hand cut images out of poster board. And then I use spray paint. This is one of my background um, stencils here. I use spray paint to uh, um, you to uh, leave the Im the images design onto canvases, walls, um, vehicles, <laughs> whatever I'm trying to paint. I've done skateboards, um, umbrellas, T-shirts, so face masks. <laughs> I, I, I I'm. I'm, I, I oftentimes paint canvases, but I'm not bound by canvases by any means. You know, I've uh, I started off with just street walls. Before I even had canvases, I was just going behind bars and arcades and alleyways, and you know, um, tagging it up. Yeah, uh, st and actually starting off with tags, doing bubble letters, and feeling the freedom of uh, pressing a uh, pressing the rattle can button. You know, and wow, I can create something I could bring brighter color to this world than uh you know brick colors and boring like white that's yeah. what a lot of buildings are <laughs> yeah. and I, I like to get out there and uh put imagery yeah. that's so me myself i'm not familiar with this style of painting have this always been a style or something that you kind of created oh no yeah this is uh this style, from what I understand, goes back to like the 40s in World War II and poss possibly even long before that. Um, but um, the French had claimed to, to have um, created this style, um, and it was revolution. It was revolutionaries in France that were using stencils and pokor, which is what they call it in Europe. Um, and they would leave different notes and um, messages of propaganda to kind of make fun of different poli politics. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, it grew from font to imagery. And people were starting to cut um, pictures of different animals and people doing things. And uh, really blew up with uh, Blackley Rat and, and Banksy. These are stencil artists that are still alive today and um, are huge in the street art world um, but other artists have been doing it too I mean pe people were doing it in the 70s Andy Warhol did stencilism for a while he does a lot of screen printing but he also did some stencils and there's many um, artists that have embraced the technique to embellish their art form it's so, just something I've been living by for the past like nine years. Okay. Uh, how was the process of it? I see you have here, you have the stencil, do you have like a, a printed out sheet over what you cut the stencil out of? Yeah, see, so I could, I could kind of walk you through. I don't know if you could see what I'm doing here right now, mm -hmm. but right now I'm working on a photo of uh, the Bernie Sanders of Europe is what, the, is what this guy told me. I don't really know this um, politician. But I'm working on different layers, and I, I'm in a photo manipulation software right now. I upload the photo, and then I turn it into uh, an, essentially a negative. I blow it up to whatever size canvas that I'm trying to paint. I scale it to that size. And then once I have a negative of it, I adjust the negative with the contrast lines to make different layers. And I print the layers out and then I glue them onto a poster board. And then after I have them glued onto the poster board, I cut the layers, I hand cut the layers with an X-Acto knife. Yeah, you know, so those are pretty um, detailed cuts there. Yeah, so I mean, uh, some people use uh, a cutting machine, like a Cricut machine, uh -huh. but the, the cutting process to me is where my art form comes out. and I, I've had people say, hey, why don't you switch to a cutting machine? And I, well, that's going to take away my art form. Gotcha. This is like when I meditate is when I'm cutting. I, I, I quickly yeah. blow through the design process. The design process takes me about 20 to 30 minutes. But to cut one of these layers, it takes me about two hours. And each painting that I do, every painting that I do has three layers. 
at least three layers. So this is the middle layer, and this is the highlight of, and it lays down just like this. And everything painted yellow on this painting, I used this layer, I laid it down like that, and then I blasted yellow. And that's how you got the yellow on the painting. Mm -hmm. Every color you see on this painting is another layer gotcha. that I hand cut at a poster board. Mm -hmm. And so it takes me about six to eight hours of cutting. It takes me about six to eight hours of cutting to um, make one of these designs, one of these paintings. And then the painting process only takes me about an hour because it's, it's spray paint. Spray paint dries fairly quickly. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes. There's three layers, so it takes about 45 minutes of drying, but then you gotta think of all the stuff I'm doing in between, laying the layer, going through the colors, and figuring out what colors I wanna use and such, but um, it's a simple process that anyone can learn if you're passionate about art. Uh, it's just a matter of um, keeping your fo focus and attention span, because nowadays, a lot, a lot of us, we watch TV and we get programmed to every six seconds try to look at something new but this is a project that takes hours and, and if you could focus on something for hours you could probably easily do stencils but uh if you if you don't have an attention span and if and if you need to do something new every 30 minutes i don't know if this art form is going to work for you <laughs> that's basically what it comes down to you say you've been doing this um a little over nine years yeah i started cutting stencils in in 2012 Okay. And um, it was started off with just font, and I wanted to make T-shirts to take to a, a festival, so I was cutting catchy, fra witty phrases into um, cardboard, and then I bought some uh, fabric paint, made some tie-dye T-shirts, and then took the fabric paint and painted stencils on the T-shirts, and then I went to the festival and sold the T-shirts, and it went over really well. I got rid of my shirts really fast, and it is when I realized I should do this more. This is fun, but I never really thought I could live by it. And it wasn't until I saw there's a a, a movie out there of a stencil artist selling a stencil. I think he sold it for like two million dollars. Wow! And uh, it, in auction, and as the stencil painting sold in auction, they they were like two two. No, it was it was it was it was in pounds because it was in Europe. But as it sold in auction, they said, sold! And they slammed the hammer like they do in auction houses. And as soon as they did that, the artist activates a shredder in the frame. And the art shreds right in front of the buyer. And it shreds like halfway through in front of them. And then the security guards go, whoa, what's going on? And they freak out because they don't know what's going on. Right. And they <laughs> go and they quickly grab the piece off the wall and unplug it. They The, the plug was they thought the plug was just for the frame lighting because there's a light built into the frame but the plug actually powered the shredder that was built into the frame too <laughs> it was a prank that this street artist pulled on basically poshy art buyers and the the painting went from basically being worth two million dollars to like ten million dollars because it was such an iconic piece at first the art the people that were buying the painting were like oh man our piece is ruined but then everyone in the art world that saw the video was like, I want that piece. That's rad. Because <laughs> it was only halfway shredded. Right. So it's still out there somewhere. Someone has it in their private collection. Uh -huh. you know. Um, but it was so inspiring to me because I saw the piece. I saw the painting and I thought, I could paint that. And someone's buying that for $2 million? Damn. I'm like, I thought, if I could paint that, could I sell it for 60 bucks? Because someone's out there buying it for $2 million. Right. <laughs> and, and is it the name that they're buying, or do they really like that design? So I started, like, looking up this guy's... His name is Banksy. I started looking up his designs and mimicking his designs. And it was... I could easily sell them for $60. People loved his style so much. I, but but then I felt like a, like a half-ass artist because I was just copying someone else's yes, style. Yes, Instead of, and I, until this day, I'm completely guilty of copying other artists' style. <laughs> All my stuff is just re, um, reproduction of what of other artists that I think are cool. Uh -huh. I take what I, what, they, what I think they do is cool, and I reproduce it in my own fashion, 
and I say, oh, look at this coolness, you know, it's really, it's all art, all art is influential, and, uh, yeah, so I just started knocking off, like, Banksy style, and then I got tired of, uh, just doing his stuff, yeah. I wanted to do more unique stuff, and more creative stuff, but with the technique that he uses, and that's kind of where I ended up today, yeah. you know, uh, What's the most you made off of one of your paintings? And what's the average cost of you? The average cost painting that I sell today is an eighty dollar painting. Mm -hmm. But the most I've made off of one of my paintings is a thousand dollars. Wow. And it was a painting this size. Wow. Um and it wasn't even I I am not even to that confident end of my art career today. I didn't expect the thousand dollars. I was I, I told the guy that it was a hundred dollar painting <laughs> and he gave me a thousand dollars because he was so Im impressed yeah. and so um, satisfied because it was a custom piece yeah, yeah. he sent me a picture of his granddaughter and he wanted me to do a painting of his granddaughter and so I did a painting of his granddaughter and I was like all right man that's a hundred bucks and he gave me a thousand and it was right around the holidays when I was hurting dude being a starving artist living out here passionately and he I think he he does know, but I don't know if he does really know how much it meant to me at that time, because yeah, yeah. I was hurting really bad, you know, and a thousand bucks was able to just change my life, to be able to get me more art supplies, get me some food, get some gas, you know, uh, get everything I need to keep on surviving as a human, because this is, this is all that I do. Hey, you've been doing it for nine years, but... <laughs> Right I've been now. living by it for two and a half years, but yeah, like yeah. it started off as a hobby nine hobby. years ago, and then it, uh, when I started selling more of it, I think it was like four years ago when I sold my first piece that I thought was worth twenty, and it sold for eighty. And I'll never remember that. I'll never forget that girl, the girl who bought one of my first, the girl who bought my first piece when uh -huh. she believed in me, and I didn't even know what to charge for it. She's like, dude, you can't sell them for this much. You put too much work into that. Exactly. You know, I, I was just trying to get my art gear, my, my, I was just trying to get a canvas back and some paint back, you know what I mean? But she's really threw me on the wall to say, dude, you can't just get that back, you gotta get money for your time. Because you're only out here for so many years, you're gonna die, and then someone's gonna sell this for 200 bucks down the road, and they're making money off of your time, man. So, that's what's cool about these NFTs. You know, I haven't really made an NFT yet, but the NFTs are supposedly helping artists catch a trickle of those funds as sales produce from their art okay. i don't know if you've looked into digital that, yeah. art or but you can uh, nowadays they have digital art sales where they build in a blockchain and every single time that art piece sells the artist gets 10 percent of that sale or whatever is written in the blockchain okay. you could write that every time it sells i get 40 percent or i get 20 percent um, uh, the common is like seven percent but like every single time that art so you might like it you could buy it and get it for a good deal from me and I'll get the original all sale per price from the sale that I give it to you and then you you know have a collection and you keep on showing it to people like look at this art piece that I own and someone could be like oh I like that art piece can I buy that well you could sell that and you could sell it for however much you want because it's yours but it's written in the blockchain that a percentage of that sale comes to me, yeah. you know, and so it go it runs along with crypto and Bitcoin yeah, and stuff. That's but what I heard about it through, through yeah, and, all and that. that's how a lot of it is being written down into. But uh, I haven't gotten into it personally myself, but it is the evolution of art. Do you have um, a social media like says want to want to contact you and reach out to you maybe about some of the art? Yeah, yeah, my uh, social media. I'm Folk Roots with the Z. Jay.